How can Miss Wright find Mr. Always forever when he's being kid good enough for Ms. Never Say Never? Hi there. Greg Swan. I got a letter, and I'm delighted to have gotten it, and I think it represents a, an enormous amount of courage on the part of the young man who wrote to me that he came to me with this question. And so I am beyond delighted, and um, I am so full of the spirit of Loki, the trickster god, that I'm wondering who it is I should piss off worse and first. The title of this movie is The Joy of Chastity. Is there any book editors out there you should stop and consider the marketing value of a title like The Joy of Chastity? I could knock out a book in about six weeks that would sell six million copies, but no one would ever actually read it, which is why I want to take this up in a video instead. So let me read you this letter and we will um, discuss why I think it's important. I've only ever had one exclusive girlfriend and it was in high school. I've had lots of girlfriends, lovers, and lady friends, but I've always told them, pretty much straight from the beginning, that we wouldn't be exclusive. I'm honest and upfront about the fact that I like them, but I don't want a committed relationship. I've noticed that I tend never to be satisfied with the women I date. Oh my goodness, we'll come back to that. I enjoy being with them for a few months, but even, uh, for a few months, even so long as a year, but I grow bored or they start pushing for a commitment that I don't want with them. In the past, I had a bad habit of tricking myself into believing I liked a woman more than I did, but nowadays I'm conscious, conscious enough of the sort of woman I want that I know before I even begin a, I've, I've even begun a relationship with a woman whether or not I am genuinely fully interested in her. So far, it's always been that I'm not. I would like a committed relationship with one woman who I really respect, admire, am interested by, and am fully attracted to. But I haven't met any who, who, any who come anywhere close to the standard I would accept, though I still have that sixth sense of knowing whether or not I could be fully interested in her. The choice to me seems to be celibacy, commit to women I'm not fully interested in, or continue with my halfway compromise of dating casually and not committing. Would that this problem were rare. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? This is a, a guy writing, and it's a guy writing that he really would like to have deeper, more meaningful relationships with young women, but that he doesn't have access to or awareness of any women who meet that standard and uh, it's kind of funny when you listen to the complaints of women that there aren't any men who are willing to give them what it is that they're looking for in the sexual marketplace and um, everyone is disappointed with everyone else this is a funny one for me it's really funny um, I, I like this young man. I mean, I know more about him than this letter. I really like him, but I don't think he's atypical at all. I think his problem is not, not just there, not just, you know, prevalent, but is common, is virtually ubiquitous. That all of us, actually, what we really want is a deep and meaningful relationship with someone that we can trust to be there for us when maybe no one else will. I mean, that is the, kind of the desire. This is what people are contracting for in a monogamous, monogamous relationship, that the guy might be trading in pursuit of more sex, less burdensome sex, less overhead on the sex. But um, he's also looking for that loyalty. He's looking for that relationship. And the same thing for the woman. She's certainly not as interested perhaps in sex and more interested perhaps in devotion that he's trading devotion for sex and she's trading sex for devotion um, but it really is the devotion that each one of them is looking for in continuing the relationship why do you keep coming back why do you keep sustaining this involvement with this person what is it that makes you do it day to day if it's you know if it's habit or some other ugly reason I really don't this relationship isn't going to last. It's not something that we need to concern ourselves with because it's temporary. 
But if your relationship is not temporary, why isn't it temporary? And what is it that you're looking for? And is the person who's looking for what you're looking for the one who's going to get it? Because you can't fix anybody else. The women that you find are available to you are not attractive to you. The men that you find are available to you are not living up to what you're looking for. In what way are you the answer to their prayers? That you have a, an image in your mind of an ideal mate, someone that you would happily settle down for, get married with, have kids with, have a life with, die beside. This imaginary person exists in your mind that if you personify her, if you imagine what she's really like, and not just in terms of abstract characteristics, but really personify her, put characteristics on her, give her a physique, give her a body, give her hair, give her a wardrobe, give her a job, give her a backstory. <clears throat> this woman, if it's a woman you're imagining, or this man, if it's a man you're imagining, what is his or her ideal mate? And are you it? Because if you're not it, then we've already solved the problem. The, the ideal mate, the ideal woman who is the ideal wife for you will be attracted to you when you are her ideal mate. The ideal husband, the ideal father for your children will be attracted to you when you are the woman that he's looking for. And if he's looking for that woman and he sees you and sees reasons to conclude that you're not her, you're out of the game. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't complete the transaction. You didn't make the sale because you weren't the right product. And um, that would be my first answer to this entire letter um, is to worry a whole lot less about the women and worry about the guy instead. The guy in the relationship is the one whose behavior you control. He's the one whose character you can improve. He's the one whose results in the real world you can influence and make better over time. And if you make yourself a better person, you will, as a consequence, as a secondary consequence, you will have made yourself more attractive as a mate. You will have increased your sexual market value. You have become more attractive to higher value women, to women that you will value more highly. You've become more attractive to them by becoming a more attractive person, by becoming a more complete, whole, perfect person, by acting upon yourself, by acting upon your values, by pursuing your values relentlessly. You became the, the lion who will attract that lioness. And why would a lioness be attracted to a tomcat? Why would a lioness be attracted to a lazy, loafing slob of a house cat? Um, and I'm not accusing the letter writer of that because I know he's not like that. But I look around me and when I look at young men, I am not inspired. And when I look at young women, very often I am encouraged to exercise harder and lose even more weight because I don't ever want to look like that. Um, to say that the pickings that are available to young people today are particularly attractive, I don't have that impression. And I may be unlucky enough to be seeing the wrong people in the wrong places, but I get around and I pay attention everywhere I go. If there are young champion men out there, they are few in number. If there are young Dagny Taggarts out there, if there are women who are worthy of the conquest of a giant. I got one at home, but I don't see many out in the world. Um, and that would be my first answer would be, be the man she's looking for, be the woman he's looking for. That if you have an idealized mate in your mind, in what way are you the ideal mate of that idealized mate? And if you're not, Work on your own self. Work on your own things. Pursue your own values. You're not doing it in order to attract a mate. What you're doing is becoming a better person, and better people attract a better mate. So be a better person. Um, my second answer would be don't soil yourself. That um, all the way through this, um, my interlocutor is talking about engaging in behaviors that I consider to be actively self-destructive, not simply 
poor choices, but poor choices that will result in ongoing, enduring damage, both to him and to the women that he's involved in, and frankly, um, ultimately to his ideal wife. We'll get to that, but um, going into any sort of a romantic relationship with a promise to fail, uh, you know, I tell them going in that there's not going to be any commitment, there's no future, that um, there's no exclusivity, um, you're just planning to fail. I mean, this is taking a job, I mean, you can, there are things about getting involved in a romantic relationship that you can liken to taking a job. And if you took a job where, you know, not at the interview, but right after they hired you, the boss said, okay, you're the one, you start Monday, and you say, oh, God, that's so great, because I want you to know that this relationship is not exclusive, and I'm going to be looking for a better job. I'm always going to be on the lookout for a little better job, but I'm really never going to commit myself all the way to this job in the first place because, duh, you know, it's not happening. It's not my thing. I'm, I'm not in love with this job. You didn't think I was in love with this job. Do well, this is a good way to uh, never see that first paycheck. Um, but the interesting thing about jobs as compared to re relationships is that jobs are fungible, that you can take a job anticipating looking for a better job and you probably don't tell that to your boss at the first job but you literally can take a job at Dairy Queen to get a paycheck while you're going to school to study to be an architect and there's nothing at all wrong with that we all do that but you can't do that in a romantic relationship and if you start off a romantic relationship with the idea that you're going to fail there is no possibility you could ever succeed there is no recovering from that there is no reverse from that that even if one or the other of you or even if both of you decide that you made a mistake and that you want to go back and erase the blackboard and start over with a new contract you really can't do it because the failure was baked in the cake it's already there um, the other part of it is um, you know, it's ultimately, it's kind of masturbatory to be engaged in lovemaking with people that you don't love. I do not have any place in my mind for casual sex, for so-called meaningless sex, emotionless sex. I don't believe this can exist at all. I do not believe it exists. Uh, and that the people who insist that it does exist are really talking about lots and lots and lots of accumulated scar tissue. That if you do this once and you observe your self-awareness afterward, if you look at your life afterward, and of course you did, and you felt shame and kind of disgust and you felt revolted with yourself the first time that you did this. And I absolve myself nothing because I've done it too, but what I did when I found myself living through this is I said, no, this is inappropriate. This is wrong. This is wrong for me. If it's right for you, go right ahead. And I don't tell people what to do. And I really don't care if you insist that you can do things that I would consider to be you know, self-destructive in say, self-destructive in itself. If you insist that you can do those things and not suffer consequences, well, go ahead and have your insistence. I don't believe you, but I don't have to. But my take is that when you engage in sexual contact with someone that you are not in love with, that you are really not expressing love, you are not making love, that you are just engaged in heated sexual friction, this is masturbation. And it's masturbation by a very deceitful means. And ordinary masturbation is so much more honest and so much cleaner, um, so much... I mean, what better expression could there be of, of self-love than loving yourself? And if your choice is to soil yourself, to soil your character, when I say soil yourself, separate the words, yourself. To soil the idea of your life, this idealized image that you have of your life, to deliberately scar and, and scourge and soil that image is a mistake in my opinion that masturbation as unsatisfying it is, as it is at least involves your engaging in sexual gratification only with someone that you actually love and only someone that you actually believe deserves that sexual gratification and um, as unsatisfying it is, as it is at least it doesn't leave you feeling dirty and I think the whole idea of sex that leaves, leaves you feeling dirty is just disgusting. This is completely the opposite of what making love should leave in your mind. Making love should leave you feeling exalted. It should leave you feeling glorious, splendorous. It should leave you feeling like a champion, like a god. And if it doesn't, you're doing it wrong. Stop doing that. Um, for guys, 
there's nothing that anybody needs to teach you about masturbation. If there are women watching this, if you go back to the first movie I made in this series of movies, you will see me talking about a hand gesture um, that is remarkable. And what I didn't say in that movie is that there's nothing about this hand gesture that requires a guy to be on the other end of the arm, that you can certainly do this for yourself. And it is masturbation. And the wonderful thing about masturbation is that as unsatisfying as it might be until you get to orgasm, when you are having an orgasm, you're not doing anything else. And so there's absolutely nothing wrong with the orgasm that comes from masturbation, particularly if you are a woman, because you can have as many as you want. That if you are a man, you get one, and then you can have another one later. But if you're a woman, you can have one and another and another and another until you have so many that you can't stand to have any more. Um, and you can do that all by yourself with your hand like that. If you are putting up with some dumbass guy just be, just for orgasms, if that's all you're really getting out of him, give him his walking papers because there's a new sheriff in town. Um, meanwhile, there's other stuff that you can do if you're willing to take yourself down to the sex toy store. There's all kinds of good stuff in there. But I will tell you that the best bang for your buck you can get online at Walmart, um, the Hitachi, Hitachi Hand Massager, it's... 50 bucks or less at Walmart, they'll deliver it to your door in a plain brown wrapper. Um, on low speed, it will make you completely nuts. On high speed, you may punch holes in the wall. You may kick holes in the wall. Um, women are cheated sexually for their entire lives. They are cheated sexually because they never take themselves in hand. This is one thing we can count on young men to do is to spend a long time making frantic hand motions and women don't do that anywhere near enough and they certainly should because there is no reason to soil yourself forevermore to put a permanent stain in your memories by letting some jackass ejaculate on you and deliver you no satisfaction give you no orgasm when you can have all you want all by yourself whenever you want and um better quality sex in the long run and no no stains on your brain I think this is a, a much better way this is the joy of chastity right there if you can't be with the one that you intend to love forever want be with the one that you love already the one that you love the most right now and that's yourself and I won't be popular in Catholic schools I suppose but um this is the solution. Um, and the second part of this, the idea of soiling yourself, is that you should not be lying by implication. The actions that you take when you make love with someone else, whether it's one time or repeatedly over the course of a year, the actions that you take when you're making love with someone else are communication in mother tongue. They are signaling in mother tongue. So you are simultaneously saying two things. You are saying, I'm not in love, and I am in love. You are saying with your words, I'm not in love, and you're saying with your body, I am in love. And so why is the girl playing this Ms. Never Say Never game? Because you are showing her again and again. You are displaying in your behavior your commitment to her in the form of the commitment of action, the actions that you are taking when you're making love with her. Um, but you're also lying to yourself when you do this because you are what you do. You are not what you say you are doing. You are what you are doing, and what you are doing is making love. And if you are making love, you are making an argument to yourself about your own commitment that you simultaneously know is false. This is cognitive dissonance, holding two diametrically opposite premises at the same time. I am in love. I'm not in love. I'm not in love. I am in love. False, 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 false. These are, these are all lies, and these lies will have consequence. These lies will make you uglier. The... Anthony put up a movie, a short clip of me talking about how the terrible ideas that you incorporate into your habits of mind in your 20s, how those terrible ideas wreck your face and your body as time goes by, how you, the ugliness in your soul evinces itself in the ugliness in your body over time. Um, but this is all a part of the same thing, that the emotional hardness that you have to affect in order to break off 
a relationship like this is also a lie, and it's also terribly hurtful. And the first time you play that hard guy game, you feel like shit afterward. Just like you felt like shit the first time you slept with someone you shouldn't have slept with. And the more you do either of those kinds of things, the easier they'll get. Not because they'll get easier emotional, but because it'll get more and more covered with scar tissue. You will cover, each time you go through this pain, it will seem easier, but it's not because it's actually gotten easier, it's because the pain is buried deeper. But the pain is still there. You are acting self-destructively, and that self-destruction will have consequences for you. I love the line from um, Accidentally Like a Martyr, the hurt gets worse but the heart gets harder, and that's what happens, and especially to guys, that girls get more suspicious and more doubtful and more wary, and um, they have less and less faith that the guy will come through in the way that she thinks he will in the end, the way that she thinks he should, um, and the guy becomes harder and harder because shutting people down after you've opened up to them in every way except the only way that matters and then having to shut them down, the hardness, the emotional hardness that you have to put yourself through just makes you harder and harder over time and that will make it more and more difficult for you to actually be available for your idealized perfect mate if that person ever should come along. You will make yourself less attractive to the person that you want to attract by playing, by masturbating, by being a fool, by wasting your time when you should be devoting all your time to becoming that person that your idealized mate is looking for. So it all comes back to the same thing. It all comes back to the idea of choosing admirably. I have just told young people, don't have sex, and that's certain to make me popular, but I hope that I am talking to wise young people. My conviction is that the only people who can endure me staring at them like this and talking about subjects this difficult, the only people who can endure that are wise. And so I hope I'm talking to wise people and I'm not offering you the benefit of my practical experience. I was a dumbass young person. I'd done all the dumb things. I am offering you the experience of a 54-year-old man. I am literally old enough to be your grandfather. Um, and I am elated by the idea of sex. I think sex is wonderful. I think that making love is the, the highest state of splendor that a human being can achieve when you're going at it the right way. And going at it the right way means being the ideal mate for your idealized perfect mate, being the perfect person for the perfect person that you need in your life and expressing that perfection in every way you can, choosing admirably at every point that you have a choice, every choice that you make, making the choice that leaves you that much closer to being your idealized perfect self. And then the love that you find when you are the person that your idealized perfect mate is looking for, the love that you find then will be perfect, and the love that you make then will be glorious, will be spectacular. But the question I asked in that first movie is, why would you want to make love any other way? And so the question I asked to my young letter writer is, why would you want to make love any other way? Why would any other kind of lovemaking be an acceptable substitute, especially when you recognize that by availing yourself of that substitute, you are soiling yourself in the instant moment you are telling lies in your action to your lover, but also to yourself and to the world. The lies that you are telling to the world could lead your idealized perfect maid away from you. She asks, hey, what about that guy? And her friend says, oh, I saw him at the Christmas party with his girlfriend. <gasps> what? That's not true. Yes, it is true. It was true in your actions. What's true is what she bought. It's not what you sold. It's what she bought. And what she bought, she bought secondhand from her girlfriend. You had no control over that transaction except in the statements that you made by your actions, and the statements that you made by your actions said you were taken when allegedly you're not, when you say you're not. And finally, by concentrating on making yourself your own idealized perfect self, by being most what you want to be with your life, you will become 
most what your idealized perfect mate is looking for in a husband or a wife. And so this is my argument for the joy of chastity, that if you want to express yourself sexually, either do it by yourself or do it with someone that you are pursuing a marriage with, that you are at least looking to get married, that you're not going to be involved with anyone who is at least, not at least a viable candidate for marriage, that you're going to have a, a relatively long list of deal breakers, of shit tests, and go through them quickly. And as soon as somebody fails a shit test, they're done. They're done. No further contact. No further... This is the way smart girls get married. This is the way smart guys get married, but there are almost no smart guys. There are some smart girls. There are a whole lot of dumb girls out there now. I want there to be a lot more smart guys and smart girls. You eliminate the deal breakers immediately, and the ones who make the cut, you take a closer look at. And only when you're seeing more that you like than that you don't like should you even be taking much of a closer look. But this is how you winnow down to the ones who who might work for you is by getting rid of the ones who won't, who definitely won't. You know definitely, definitely no possibility, no future. Do not pursue a future. Don't waste your present when there is no future. Instead, if you can't possibly be involved with someone that you really could consider marrying, then devote your attention to something else. When there's nothing you can do, do something else instead. And for a young man or a young woman, I would say devoting your attention to your education and your career makes a hell of a lot more sense than worrying about getting laid. That getting laid is a temporary pleasure that comes with no end of downstream risks and penalties and focusing on your education and career turns into health, wealth, and happiness, which in their turn make you that much more attractive as a mate. Being her ideal husband is how you will find your ideal wife. Being his ideal wife is how you will find your ideal husband. So do that instead. Be a better person and you'll find better love. Bless you. Thank you so much for enduring this one in particular. And I look forward to talking to you again soon.